In recreating ancient Egypt, Assassin's Creed Origins doesn't just give players a city or three to explore with some countryside in between, it's building an entire seamless country you can travel freely across. This is the biggest world ever created for an Assassin's Creed game, and it's packed with dynamic things to discover and pursue. You know, when we started by saying let's do ancient Egypt, it was going to be a country. Ancient Egypt meant many things for us. It meant, yes, cities, but also all the wilderness areas, and we wanted to show the diversity of this wilderness and, and something that people, as they play the game and get into hours and hours of it, they're constantly seeing new stuff from the world, from the environment. The team began with a world around the size of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flags with one important difference. It's all land. Well, it's mostly land. No matter where you are, there's a density to the landscape that creates a feeling that there's always some area you haven't explored, something you haven't uncovered. In terms of the, the granularity of the details, the, the experiences that you can have, the things you can run into, the NPCs, the animals, the fauna, uh, it was, it's much, much more dense. Uh, so this is definitely, in terms of content, the biggest world we've, we've ever built. We wanted that the exploration of the world to really be jaw-dropping. We wanted people to be lost in this world for hours and hours, so the game is quite huge. The world is massive. Egypt, even in the game setting of 49 BCE, was never an undifferentiated landscape of deserts, pyramids, and snazzy headgear. It was huge and cosmopolitan, a hub of trade, agriculture, and craftsmanship. From Alexandria to Memphis, Egypt was a place of geographical contrast and cultural diversity, and recreating the entire country as a single open world is one of Assassin's Creed Origins' greatest achievements. So if you go into Alexandria, it's a very Greek city, a very big and broad streets, and then you go into Memphis, it's very crowded, and all of this is based on the historical research that we do. So we learned, for instance, that the, the Memphis is very close to the Nile, and that the course of the Nile changed with centuries and that it affected the, how the city was built. And so in return, that affects the way that we create that city and that, that is what players will experience. A city filled with, with water, with caves, with, uh, uh, surrounded by the Nile, with boats around. So uh, very, very nice and rich city. So historical research is very important for us. Next to capturing the scale and detail of Egypt, the game's biggest task is to fill its vast spaces with interesting things to see and do. The Egypt of Assassin's Creed Origins is a dynamic place, one where you'll always be able to find wildlife to hunt, a secret to uncover, a bandit gang to raid, or a quest to pursue. In fact, you'll need to discover the game's quests on your own, and there are multiple ways to do it. A vital contact might direct you to someone who wants you to check on a friend in danger, for example, or you might just stumble onto that friend while exploring and get pulled into a new adventure. You can even leave a quest at any time, pursue other tasks, and then pick up again from where you left off. There's tombs and temples to explore, there's puzzles in the world, you know, left by the ancient people. There's a lot of uh, really cool activities to do in the world. There's a huge density there. Assassin's Creed Origins is set during the reign of Cleopatra, an extremely tumultuous and pivotal era for Egypt, and one that fits in well with the series' preference for periods of conflict, upheaval, and massive societal change. The, the game takes place during her ascension to the throne, um, during this time period, uh, her father, Ptolemy XII, had passed away, and so he left the country into the hands of Cleopatra and her brother, Ptolemy XIII, uh, who is the boy king. And uh, right away, there was conflict and strife and, and a civil war between the two, and Cleopatra gets exiled. And so we catch up to her uh, in our context when she's exiled. And so she's on her way to reclaiming her throne. Pretty much everyone in Cleopatra's family has been, has been assassinating each other. Uh, so that creates this unique set that's tremendous to create a story and to go around all of this, this plot. Ptolemy 13 appears to have the full support of a masked secret society, calling itself the Order of the Ancients. And since history tells us the Boy King's power grab was orchestrated mostly by his advisors, it's likely the masked men are behind the Civil War itself. The Order of the Ancients are trying to control Ptolemy XIII. They believe that he's younger and weak and that they could manipulate him easily. However, they're, they're a secret society uh, and they will always be in Bayek's path. And so you will have to make your way through that. In any case, Cleopatra would soon have a powerful ally of her own. And at this point, uh, we have Caesar who shows up at some point chasing after another Roman, uh, Pompey. Pompey came to Egypt in order to be protected, thinking that they had an alliance. But Ptolemy, knowing that Caesar was coming, he decides to assassinate Pompey as a gift to Caesar. 
which only uh, uh, infuriates Caesar, saying that he was, yes, he was my enemy, but he was also a Roman. You cannot kill a Roman like that. And so this pushes him to ally with Cleopatra. And so we get to meet these key central figures. So Caesar being, you know, this legendary tactician, I think one of the most epic historical figures that we can possibly have uh, in the Assassin's Creed series. We wanted our players to experience it sort of as if, you know, for Bayek, these are also at some point uh, gods, you know, Cleopatra, Ptolemy, they're considered to be gods in this world. And as he meets them and he's almost, you know, begin at, in awe of who they are, as soon as he meets them and he realizes these are human beings with their own flaws and weaknesses and strengths, and he connects with some, doesn't connect with others, and this is, we, we want it to be a reflection of how, you know, hopefully our players can also envision these kind of people. Have them boiled to death inside a bronze bull. Goddess, no. They were cohost. Bayek's quest isn't just about exploring ancient Egypt or defying the Ptolemies, or even fighting the masked agents of the Order of the Ancients. It's about finding a new place in a world whose changing traditions have made him obsolete, and it's a quest that will lead, eventually, to the founding of what we now know as the Assassin Brotherhood. From the start, we know that assassins are fictive characters, so it's all right. I mean, we acknowledge that this is not a documentary, even if we're based off history, even if history is our playground and we like to play with it. So Bayek, uh, within that environment, even though he's fictive and he interacts with real people, we try to make it believable. That really uh, rootens him into the realm of Egypt. Assassin's Creed Origins is coming October 27th for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. To find out more, check out the other videos on this channel and visit us at Ubiblog. Uh, so effectively, we started with a map that was about, you know, Black Flag world map and replace the water with land. So we felt we're at the time, we can do it, we can pull it off. Um, and then being set in ancient Egypt and, and taking the time, uh, time period of Cleopatra, you know, it's about uh, over a thousand years before the first AC. So it kind of gave us a really good standing point to say, you know what, we can tell an epic story that is really important to the series, which is the origin. Uh, and then of course it was a matter of how do we infuse Egypt intimately into that origin story. So for sure, things like religion, culture, the background of, of our characters, the background of Bayek and who he is, is intimately married into that birth. Now, I, I, I'm a bit, com not confused, but uh, between Cleopatra's time, is that new, middle, or old Egypt? So, so this is the, the end of the old era. Okay. So, so this is around 49 BCE. Okay, perfect. So effectively, uh, it, she, she's the last pharaoh. This is, we felt that this was a time period where Egypt is very rich already with, with history and culture, so that even if Bayek, our protagonist, is uh, roaming through the world, that he's still discovering his own country, because mm -hmm. we want our players to discover it as well. Um, but it also affords us to meet epic characters like Caesar and Cleopatra, to go through the end of the, the old era, the beginning of a new world, um, and it felt like that this was a, an amazing crucible of history to, to give the birth of our order, which lasts for 2,000 years in our lore. So it just felt like, you know, the stars were aligning, this is an epic time period for us, and uh, it connected really well with what was happening at the time period. So tell me, I mean, the landscape, the environment, the feel, the passion, the emotion that you put into Cleopatra, as we saw in the trailer, yeah. looking at her subjects, I mean, you could see the love that was put into this game. I'm Thank blown you. away. Thank you. Um, Egypt, such a well, rich, lore-heavy, history-bringing yeah. place. What what research did you guys do to I mean this looks amazing. I feel like Thank you. I was there. Like I, you know I feel like I'm there right now. What research went into this? Well, you know, we're one of the only series that takes a look at history from this perspective where we embed you deeply into that history and have you interact with the people, the situations, uh, the the locales. So we take it very seriously. Um, you know, we say history is our playground, which means that, you know, we're creating a fiction, but it's a credible fiction. We try to, to do justice to the culture, to the time period. Uh, so we do a lot of research. The first two years of this project, as we're building prototypes, as we're figuring out the gameplay, we're doing a ton of research with historians, with Egyptologists, on uh, what, are the, what are the details of this time? Who are the, its people? What happened, not only in the big moments that we're aware of, so for example, the Siege of Alexandria, which is a big epic moment, of but in the, in the details of you know, what was happening in Memphis, what was happening, uh, you know, in the Giza Plateau. Uh, so we spent years researching. We have 
historians embedded in our team that are always there when we do, let's say, narrative reviews, discussions about locations, just to give us making sure we understand the anecdote of history. Uh, so we take it very seriously. We feel a responsibility to do justice to the culture, the time period, the history of it. Uh, if in some strange way we're somehow educating people on history, on Egypt, without them even realizing it, that's <laughs> wonderful for us. Um, so, so definitely a ton of effort goes into the, the research and bringing this world to life. Uh, beyond the, the setting, what else has changed in Origins between the gameplay and mechanics? Has anything yeah. been added? Oh, absolutely. It's, so, when we, so when I say we wanted to refresh the experience, Experience at some point means the narrative structure, the gameplay, uh, the way content is presented to our players. It, it's, it's effectively everything. Yeah, the UI even, right? It, exactly. It's the way the players reads the game and, and, and reacts to it. Um, so from the controllers, you know, the, the combat system is built from scratch. Uh, we wanted something that was very versatile, something that was very dynamic. Uh, we wanted the, the RPG element uh, to be much stronger in this game, that leveling up, having abilities, uh, finding gear, so for example here, finding new gear really matters to, to the player. So making sure that works within the combat system, within stealth, uh, was a lot that we had to work on. Here, this is an ability that we're, we're seeing, which is that the players can kind of change the time of day because... Wow. The ability the to sleep. Exactly. We call it meditation. He's meditating. Okay. He's really... I you actually know, wasn't far off. Introspecting. <laughs> Um, but the idea is, you know, the, the, the world is really alive. NPCs, the, the people who inhabit this world have schedules, have count, uh, agendas and needs. You know, soldiers, if you try to infiltrate a place at night, you know, you'll, you might have half the soldiers are sleeping. Mm. Uh, or during the day that they're more on patrol, but maybe they've left the area. So maybe you have more guards at night, but more are sleeping. So the idea is players can really approach uh, the world, the challenges at their own pace uh, with a lot of different tools. Here we can see we're running into a, a tomb, which is a very cool way for us to create a more linear gameplay challenge. Mm -hmm. So puzzles, navigation challenges, that kind of thing, but still within the context of this big open world. So a lot of new mechanics, a lot of new things for players to, to explore and, and experience. I mean, the first thing I noticed when I seen one of the first trailers was the combat. Yeah. It's so fluid, and, and it looks amazing. And you were talking about bringing some RPG elements to it. Yeah. I saw numbers. Yeah, yeah, Are those yeah. for crits or yeah, yeah. <laughs> that blue, we have a, we have I like full that. blown, uh, full blown RP. So uh, we get a lot of questions about that. So in terms of UI, uh, people can play with that. They can turn it off if they don't like okay. it. But uh, myself, I love the RPG elements. Yes. I, I want to see my crits. I want to yes. see my. I love you know, to min max, right? Exactly. Like I want the best weapon. So can you change your weapons? Can you change your armor? Like can you upgrade them? Oh, absolutely. So so there's a massive gear system. Uh, where, you know, gear has rarities, levels, attributes, properties. Uh, so, for sure, you know, finding, you can find weapons that do bleeding damage, weapons that, that oh. have... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> we've gone far into the, the realm of RPG. Um, again, it felt, we felt like we're making a really big step for AC, something that's new. Uh, we wanted that if someone is playing the game for 40, 50 hours, the game's constantly rewarding them, providing them new challenges, so, so boss fights are a big thing in the game. Uh, there's a ton of bosses in the world. If they um, defeat all the bosses, do they get something extra? Oh, if, well, well, oh let's I'm put sorry. it this way. No, no, no. <laughs> let's put it this way. We consistently reward our players for uh, exploring the game, for playing its challenges. So most definitely, uh, the bosses constantly offer really awesome rewards. I'm just saying, I'm a there's completionist. There's lots of cool surprises. Yeah, so if too. I have to collect something, like I want to make sure that I get all of it. And there's a lot of that in the game. Uh, absolutely. We have a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, uh, we wanted that oh, the game also feels organic, but you can, un you can trust the fact that if you explore, if you, you know, fight an awesome boss, you're going to get something out of it.